Hey everyone, today I want to talk about doing the CVT transmission fluid in a Toyota Corolla. Now I did a video a while ago where I talked about what was actually involved with it, but I didn't physically do it because I had the dealer do it. Uh, since then I've been getting a lot of questions, comments, and concerns, and I've been doing a lot of research myself about this because Toyota really doesn't provide a lot of information about it. So I wanted to do a drain and fill myself to actually see what the fluid physically looks like. How contaminated does it really look? just from looking at the fluid after so many miles. Now, I do over, overwhelmingly highway mileage. I have 113,000 miles in the car, and it's got one drain and fill. Now, since some, a lot of the research that I've done, some of the information that I've put together, um, I did a drain and fill last night. Didn't record it, but I'm going to record the next one I do because I'm going to do a couple of these things because in order to change the overwhelming majority of the fluid in this car, you have to do a drain and fill about half a dozen times because the entire system holds approximately eight quarts of fluid and you're only changing two. I verified that last night. When you do a drain and fill from the pan, you're only getting out two quarts of fluid. So it'll once you put new fluid in with the old, you have to drive it a little bit, it mixes it up and doing it about half a dozen times will change the overwhelming majority of the fluid in the car because despite what some people say, you cannot drain all the fluid out of the transmission. This is a sealed transmission. The only way you're going to get all the fluid out of it is if you physically take it out of the car and take it apart and drain the torque converter, which you cannot do on this car because that's where the majority of the fluid resides when the car is not running. So um, if you've looked at your Toyota Corolla maintenance guide, you've probably seen on page 45 under 60,000 miles under additional maintenance for special operating conditions, driving while towing using a car top carrier heavy loading to replace the fluid at 60,000 miles. Now this is the only recommendation Toyota has. They don't have a recommendation for normal driving, which is what most people do. So some people like myself have thought, all right, if you're doing 60,000 miles of heavy driving, you're probably stretched to about 100,000 miles, which is when I had the dealer do my fluid initially. So I've gotten everything from you're crazy, even 60,000 miles is too much, the fluid's toast by 30,000 miles, you need to change it or you never have to change it. It's sealed for the life of the transmission. So I wanted to kind of take a look myself at it. Now, this is what the fluid looked like when I drained it out of my car yesterday. This fluid is 113,000 miles of highway driving and it was changed once by the dealer. Is the fluid darker? Absolutely. Is it still pretty red? Yeah, it's not, it's contaminated, but I don't think it's heavily contaminated. Now, a lot of people are gonna argue with me and tell me that this is totally shot, it's black, it's absolutely ruined. I need to get all this out of my transmission as fast as possible. Here's the thing, you cannot accurately tell the, the, the condition of fluid by the color. So if you were to give this to somebody and ask them how many miles are on it, you're gonna get all different kinds of answers. If you were to take, drain the oil out of your car halfway through the uh, oil change interval and have somebody look at the oil and ask them, all right, what kind of condition do you think this oil is in? You're gonna get a ton of people saying, oh my God, that oil is totally contaminated, it's shot, get it out of your car but they're not gonna know what, how many miles or hours are actually on the oil. So going by just the color is not really a real accurate way to gauge what kind of condition the fluid is actually in in a transmission. Now, once it starts getting really, really black and you can't see any red in it, it's probably a good idea, but it's gonna start getting a little dark as it gets miles on it, as it starts to break down a little bit, but that doesn't necessarily mean that it's shot. So unfortunately, there's really no great way to go by this. But until it starts to really, the viscosity change starts getting thicker, doesn't flow as well, or it's contaminated or it has actual particles in it, that's really the only way to tell that it's truly, truly uh, shot. So uh, as far as the tools and what materials you're gonna need for this, now, Toyota doesn't really sell their transmission fluid anywhere. You have, really have to go to the dealer if you wanna get it, and that stuff is really overpriced. So. The better way to do this, I think, is to go with this ASIN transmission fluid. Now, ASIN is the company that actually makes the transmission for these CVT Corollas. This is the fluid that the, the transmission manufacturer recommends. It's formulated for FE transmissions, and there's the part number. Now, the FE transmission, as you can verify on the fill plug on the side of the transmission, is the transmission of the Corollas. Now, I think this is a much better way to go. This is from the transmission manufacturer. It's a lot cheaper. You're talking probably about eight bucks a quart for this stuff, better than about 20 or more a quart for the actual Toyota branded fluid. Now, to be perfectly honest, I don't know if there's a difference, but I have a feeling that Toyota just slaps their name on this stuff and charges you three times as much. So, like I said, Asin says this is good enough for their transmissions, it's good enough for me. Now, 
As far as what tools you're gonna need to do this job, obviously you need a drain pan to catch the fluid that comes out. You're only taking two quarts out. I verified that yesterday. I bought four of these things. I took got exactly two quarts out when I drained it from the pan yesterday. So you're gonna need not too big of a pan. Uh, for getting the actual plug off on the bottom of the transmission, you're gonna need a six millimeter Allen key. Um, preferably, you're gonna need one of these Allen keys that's designed to go on a ratchet. You get a little bit more leverage with this, a little bit easier to get the drain plug off. Uh, they will get pretty tight over time. Uh, if you don't have one of these, you can usually use this and put a vice grip or something on it, like a pipe that's gonna give you a little bit more leverage just to crack it loose. And then when you get the drain plug off, there's also a little plastic straw that's up inside the pan that you need to use this to get it off. It's a little bit easier to control. So you can spin that out to drain all the fluid out. When you do, like I said, two quarts. Obviously, you're going to need a ratchet to utilize this. And sometimes an extension works depending on uh, how you're using it. Now, you do probably want to get the car off the ground. You can do it with the car sitting on the ground. But it's a little bit easier if you get the car jacked up. So you can get under the car a little bit better, but you will have to pull the driver's front wheel off to do this procedure. So, uh, and then as far as getting the actual fluid back in the car, you need a 21 millimeter socket to get the wheel off. If you don't have a 21 millimeter socket, it's no big deal. Use the lug wrench that the car comes with. You need a 10 millimeter socket because there's two 10 millimeter bolts and the wheel well line have to come off as well as a screwdriver because there's one plastic rivet that has to come out. And when you open that up, this will give you access to the 24 millimeter fill bolt on the side of the transmission that has the markings for the transmission type, which should be FE. That's what the overwhelming majority of the Corollas are. They're FE transmission types, and this takes that off. Now, unfortunately with this, with this not having a dipstick on it, there's no good way to truly measure the fluid once it's in uh, to know what the right level is. Now, there's been a couple videos on the internet that talk about using a paper clip to jump two of the ports on the OBD2 computer to basically trick the transmissions to put it into like a maintenance mode. I don't recommend doing that. If you jump the wrong port and send power where it's not supposed to go, you run the serious risk of doing some serious damage to the electronics in a car. If you wanna go ahead and do that yourself, by all means, but there's really no great way to check the level yourself. Um, some other videos say use a scan tool. Unfortunately, most people don't have scan tools laying around to just, you know, check, talk to the computer to check the fluid level. So uh, unfortunately, the, there's really no great way to do this. Um, I've even heard people use, put a heat gun, you know, run the transmission for a few minutes on the stands, let the fluid get warm, use a heat gun to verify the temperature of the pan and go that way. That's probably the way most people would really be able to do it. Again, not the best way, but it'll really work if you really need to do it that way. Now, you also are gonna need two containers. One good one, or one uh, old one that doesn't necessarily have to be clean, and one good one that has to be clean. The clean one, you really wanna make sure it's washed out, there's no moisture in it, no water, no nothing. It's perfectly dry inside and perfectly clean. Essentially, what you're gonna do is, you're gonna take out the old fluid, put it in here, whatever line it comes to, you're gonna take the new fluid, pour it in here, and you want them to be at the same level. Now, if you do it this way, you have to make sure the fluids are at the same temperature. Because if this is hot and this is cold, as this, and you put them at the same level, as this cools, the level's gonna drop. And now it's not gonna be accurate to each other. So the transmission has to be cold when you do this. So I recommend you let the car sit overnight so it's completely cooled down so that, that the fluids are both at the same level. And when you want to go to put the fluid back in the car, the easiest way is to have some sort of longer funnel like this. Now, if you have like a transmission funnel, it will work. It, you're gonna have to fight it a little bit and you're only be able to do, do a very slow pour because of the angle that the drain, that the fill bolt sits at. So I have this funnel, here's the part number if you want to pick up something like this. And this worked very well for me. I was able to put this inside the fill hole and hold this outside the wheel well. I was able to drain it into the transmission very nicely. Um, it went in no problem. I was able to fill it up pretty quickly and it made the process much simpler. So you really don't need any crazy tools to do this job. Um, when you are put button everything back up, when you put the drain bolt back on the bottom of the pan, it's 36 pounds of torque, I believe, to put the, the drain on the bottom and it's 30 pounds of torque to put the fill bolt back on. 
So they have to be pretty snug. Don't go crazy, but pretty snug. Now there are a, there's another really good video on the internet that talks about doing this uh, by DNY Automotive. The, when they did this, they also changed the uh, filter on the transmission. Now it's definitely a good idea to not. It's definitely not a bad idea to do that. But if you're not letting the fluid get really contaminated and you're doing this at enough of an interval, um, I don't necessarily think that has to be done because transmissions do not get contaminated the way oil does you know you're not having the combustion process take place inside the transmission so there's really no actual contaminants being introduced that aren't already in there because the transmission fluid uh the transmission filters are really just a screen to kind of catch anything that makes it in there so they're not really getting anywhere near the contaminants that an engine would so again not a bad idea to do if you want to go through the extra step of doing that i'll link that video in the description below uh, about doing the uh, the filter with it as well because that's all actually a really, really good video. Now, when I started this video, I talked about the interval in a Toyota Guide. 60,000 miles for, for heavy towing or heavy usage, but no recommendation for regular. Now, you saw what mine looks like at 113,000 miles with one drain and fill. So it's dirty, but it's not terrible. Now, most people, when they're going to go ahead and do the fluid, typically they will do their research. They're gonna come up with some sort of predetermined number in their head. It's usually gonna be a mileage number. It's not usually gonna be hours or anything like that or, or the amount of uh, months that have gone by. So they're gonna reach a number, let's say 100,000 miles. That's what most people will do. You reach 100,000 miles and you're gonna do this process. The problem is, like I said earlier, you need to do this about half a dozen times to change the overwhelming majority, majority of the fluid in there since you can only do two quarts at one time. So you're gonna, Drain out two quarts, fill it dry for a week. Drain out two quarts, fill it dry for a week. And you're going to do that process six times. So for about six weeks or so, you're going to be doing this every week to, to change this fluid. And at that point, you're waiting till the fluid gets pretty contaminated. I don't think it's necessarily completely shot at that point, but it's going to have a lot of miles on it. And it's going to have a lot of time on it by then. And it, it's going to be pretty contaminated. I think the better way to do this is instead of waiting until it gets really bad and then trying to change it all by doing multiple drain and fills, you should probably do this at a much shorter interval. I'm, gonna, I'm thinking probably about 20,000 miles do a drain and fill. Now, depending on how many how often you do your oil. I do mine every 10,000 miles because I do a lot of highway. If you don't think 10,000 miles is too much and you do say 5,000 miles, every fourth oil change, or if you're doing 10,000 miles, every second oil change, do a drain and fill of this. That way you're always introducing new, clean, fresh fluid into the system. And the fluid is never, ever really going to get really dark and contaminated because every, say, 20,000 miles or whatever number you think is appropriate for your car, you're taking two bad two contaminated quarts out putting two brand new clean quarts in and every 20,000 or whatever miles you want to do you're putting new fluid in so it's always getting replenished with clean fluid and there's very very little breakdown of the fluid occurring at that point and I think that's a much better way to go than just kind of picking some arbitrary mileage number that you're really just kind of taking a guess at and by doing it every so many miles like 20,000 you're seeing the fluid come out and you're kind of getting somewhat of an idea of how dark it is because if you're doing a lot of heavy driving you got a heavy foot or you do a lot of idling and the fluid comes out a lot darker than you thought it was at least now you kind of can gauge it and if you're saying all right this is coming out a lot darker than i thought i'm not really comfortable with it being this dark now you can bump it up and say every 10,000 miles do a drain and fill so now you're getting an idea instead of getting a surprise at 100,000 miles if it's a lot worse than you anticipated so i think this is a better way to go to change it a little bit more often and only doing one instead of having to do like half a dozen times in a short period of time so that's my opinion on, on the research I've been doing. Unfortunately, Toyota really doesn't support their owners in doing this that well. They don't want them doing this. They only want you to go to the dealer to do this. They don't offer a lot of recommendations. And they, uh, they only sell the, the materials for the most part through their dealer. But uh, if you're kind of looking at, at how to do this, I think this is the better way to go. Uh, I'm, I am going to do another video in another couple weeks. I'm going to physically drain the fluid out of my Corolla and I'm going to show you all the various parts so now you kind of have the tools and you know the materials that you're going to need to do this so if you need to gather this stuff up to kind of collect it and I will go through I'll show the actual parts because some people actually wanted to physically see what they looked like and I will uh, go from there so I hope you enjoyed the video thanks for watching